Hello everyone and welcome to homework assignment number two, week two, genius mapping. It's Professor Thomas here. Let's do a quick overview of genius mapping before we jump on into the homework assignment. Remember, genius mappers believe there's no reason to read every single word in a passage. Passages are basically put together in paragraph form. This is called an argumentative essay. A paragraph will be put together with a topic sentence followed by details to support that particular topic. So. What we do as a genius mapper is we read our first sentence to find out what the big picture is. What the big picture is, we'll go ahead and circle the main subject, the verb, and maybe underline one more word. Then we move on to the next paragraph. We read the topic sentence, we circle the subject, the verb, and maybe underline one more word. We do that throughout the whole passage for every single paragraph. Then we come on back, we connect the main subjects together throughout the passage by drawing a line and connecting the ideas together. Remember, what they'll do is something called the Scooby-Doo. The Scooby-Doo says they'll say the same thing, but they'll use different words. For example, paragraph one might talk about a car. Paragraph two might talk about a vehicle. Paragraph three might talk about a van. They all talk about the same thing, but they use different words to express the same idea. Connect your ideas with a line as you go through. Then we're going to come on over here and we'll go ahead and put a plus minus or a neutral next to each particular paragraph. That will tell us what the author thinks of the subject they're talking about. And that, once again, is the good stinky rule. Let's take a look at paragraph number one here in passage number four. It says, if I remember rightly, it was back in 1963 that I first became interested in the biochemistry of memory. The main subject here is biochemistry of memory. The verb is became interested. So we know that throughout the passage, we're somehow going to have to be talking about biochemistry of memory. So when we come on down to paragraph number two, we see that paragraph two's topic sentence says, well, maybe it turned out to be that the flatworm experiments that were not easy to replicate have since been called into question. So we know that flatworm experiments have something to do with the biochemistry of memory. Maybe they're testing memory on flatworms. So they're being called into question. Okay, so we're not real sure about that. Neutral, maybe even a little on the negative side. We come on down to paragraph number three. We read the topic sentence and sub circle the subject and the verb. I have reached an age on the slippery slope side of 50 when I have increasingly affected by familiar faces that have no names, forgotten appointments, unpaid bills. So we know that somehow this topic sentence has to be related back to the biochemistry of memory. So we saw that flatworms is something that they were testing, and now we're talking about forgotten appointments. That has got to do something with memory. So you see how first we go from biochemistry of memory to experiments on biochemistry of memory to now into the real world about people forgetting things. Sounds negative here. Slippery slope and forgotten. Go ahead, put a negative symbol next to that. Moving on to the next paragraph, we start off with a flip-flopper, which is a word like but, yet, or however, which means we're gonna switch directions. We'll go from positive to negative to negative to positive and so forth. Now, we start off with, but if the truth be told, we still wouldn't know much about how the, mem the human brain stores information. So storing information has something to do with memory. Forgotten appointments has something to do with memory. So we're not sure what's going on here, so we're going to put a negative symbol next to that. Also, if you look over here, we're going to switch directions here. We circle the word but, and then you come down over here and you see biochemistry of memory and storing information so you know we definitely are on the right topic. Moving on to the next paragraph. It says, faced with the intractable complexity of the human brain, memory, many memory researchers choose to work with simpler organisms. Simpler organisms goes back to the flatworm experiment. And human brain, what does your brain do? Your brain remembers. Here, we have memory researchers here. So it's saying that these memory researchers can't quite figure out what's going on with memory. So maybe they're gonna use easier organisms than the human brain itself, referring kind of back here to the flatworm experiments. Let's take a look at the next paragraph. The topic sentence says this, no more challenging riddle remains to be solved by science than how it is that from a lifetime of experiences can be summed up from remembrance of things past 
sights, sounds, tastes, smells, ideas, and convictions. Long topic sentence here, but you know that we have to be talking about memory. So as you read all this gobbledygook here, you have to search out for a word that says something or reminds you of memory. And remembrances, that's the word that we're going to go ahead and circle. Remembrances of things, of the past. That reminds me of a memory. Okay, we go ahead and circle that. And it says, no more challenging, riddle remains to be solved. We haven't figured it out. It sounds negative. They're still stumped. We don't know how we remember. And then you go down here, it says, few scientists doubt memories are somehow physically stored, biochemistry of the brain. But, go ahead, circle our main flip-flopper here, you know that this topic sentence is negative. Science, we haven't figured out how people remember stuff. We've tried everything. We've tried to work with people. We've tried to work with flatworms. We've tried to work with simpler organisms. But we're not quite sure how the human brain remembers. That is the big picture when you genius map this particular passage out. Let's come on down and take a look at some particular questions here starting with 31. 31 says, the answer to which of the following questions would be solved would solve the challenging riddle the author refers to in line 73. So line 73, we come on back, take a look at line 73. Line 73 is the challenging riddle remains to be solved. The challenging riddle of what? The challenging riddle of the big picture, which has to do with memory. So you come on over here and we can cross out stuff that has nothing to do with memory whatsoever. Here, what happens to a nerve cell? That doesn't say anything about memory. Out. B says electrochemical system. That doesn't say anything about memory. Questions will revolve around the central theme. The central theme here is remember, remembering or memory. We're not sure how uh, it quite works. If you look at answer B and C, they're not even on the central theme. Go ahead, cross those out. We're left with A and we're left with D. Let's go ahead and take a look at A. A says, at what age do most people begin to lose memory? That is a little bit too specific because that talks about paragraph two only. D, therefore, will be the correct answer when you look at the central theme. Remember, the central theme, the questions are going to revolve around that central theme. Let's go ahead and take a look at practice problem number 32 and polish it off for today's homework assignment. 32 says, which of the following statements most accurately expresses the main idea of this particular passage? Come on over here, you know that we're going to have to talk about memory and we're going to have to talk about how we're not quite sure how the human brain remembers things over here it says the loss of memory is a worrisome concern to many people as they grow older well mm, kind of but not really that's not the central theme g says the discovery of flatworms and memory flatworms it's too narrow go ahead cross that one out and also cross out f we're left with answer choice h and we're left with j let's go ahead and take a look at h the human brain stores memory in the same way as a computer well that doesn't say anything about the central theme. If you look at J, J says the complexity of the human memory presents problems in both science, research, and in ordinary life. In science, that talks about the scientists earlier, but also we talked about ordinary life. Remember the slippery slope paragraph over here? Both are entailed in the last answer choice, which is J for practice problem number 32. Remember, genius mappers believe you don't need to read every single word. When you do read every single word, you get confused about what the central theme is. Go ahead in all your topic sentences, circle your main subject, your verb, and if you feel like you need to underline one more word or two, go ahead and do that. Then go back and connect the dots. The dots will be all of your topic sentences, main subjects. Your main subjects have to be talking about the same thing. They're going to use different words or scooby-doo you and say the same concept with different words here. Biochemistry of memory says the same thing as a flatworm experiment because a flatworm experiment is doing what? It's doing research on the biochemistry of memory. There you have it. It's homework assignment number two, week two, genius mapping. We'll see you in week three.